Welcome to the video tutorial for version 8 of the LegendPlex data analysis software for Windows-based computers. The software can be downloaded free of charge from under the software tab on our website at biolegend.com slash legendplex. Once installed, the software can be used to analyze flow cytometry files generated from our LegendPlex immunoassays. This tutorial will cover all the steps necessary to analyze a typical LegendPlex dataset and assumes users have followed the protocol included in their assay manual. To begin, insert the USB dongle, which was included inside your LegendPlex kit, into a USB port on your PC. The dongle is used as the license key for the software. Once it has been inserted, please wait at least 15 seconds for your computer to recognize the dongle, after which you may launch the software. The use of the LegendPlex data analysis software proceeds sequentially through four modular steps. 1. Loading FCS files. 2. Gating. 3. Inspection of results. 4. Generation of output reports. Part 1. Loading FCS files. The LegendPlex data analysis software supports the following file types. FCS 2.0, 3.0, 3.1, and .lmd files. In addition, all FCS files from your assay need to have been acquired under exactly the same flow cytometer settings in order for the software to be able to analyze them together. Be sure to load all files generated from your LegendPlex assay. This includes both standard curve files as well as those from unknown samples. To load files into the software's Quick Wizard window, please use the following methods. Click the blue Add Files button. This will prompt a pop-up window which users can use to locate the folder containing their assay files. Once located, select all relevant files and drag them from the pop-up window into the Quick Wizard window. Alternatively, open the folder containing their assay files independent of the software and then select and drop all assay files into the Quick Wizard window. Ordering FCS files. After all files have been loaded into the Quick Wizard window, arrange the files so that your standard curve files are at the top of the list followed by all unknown sample replicates. Click on the Name tab to sort the FCS files alphabetically. This option is usually sufficient to properly order the files, provided that you have followed the instructions in the assay manual and named the files using a consecutive numbering scheme. Alternatively, files can also be click and dragged to their appropriate location on the list. The properly ordered file list should now contain the standard curve files at the top of the list followed by all unknown samples sequentially arranged by replicate. Once this is accomplished, click the green Next button on the bottom right of the Quick Wizard. The Settings window. After clicking Next, the Settings window will appear to the right of the file list. This window is used to define the parameters associated with the standard curve files from the assay. Note, the LegendPlex data analysis software has been designed so that many of the default settings in this window do not need to be adjusted if you have adhered to the protocol found in your assay manual. Important setting options include the following. Highest concentration. By default, this value is set to 10,000 picograms per milliliter. Certain LegendPlex assays may contain alternative standard concentrations. Please consult the certificate of analysis included in your assay to determine the specific values for your assay. If your panel has top standard concentrations over the 10,000 picogram per milliliter, these values will be adjusted later in the analysis. Do not attempt to adjust the values here. Direction. This parameter setting informs the software whether your standard curve files are ordered on the quick wizard list from lowest to highest, and thus increasing, or from highest to lowest, i.e. decreasing. Select the appropriate setting now. Number of replicates. Ensure that this value matches the number of replicates you have for your assay standard curve points. The number of replicates for each standard curve point recommended by the manual is 2. However, some researchers elect to run the assay using a different number. Replicate mode. 
This parameter has two settings, AABBCC or ABC, ABC. The AABBCC mode is for standard curve files arranged with replicates adjacent to one another, i.e. both replicates of C7 followed by both replicates of C6, etc. The ABC ABC mode is used if the standard curve files are listed by the entire dilution series followed by the replicate series, i.e. C7-C0 files in the first replicate, then C7-C0 files for the second replicate. Autosave. This feature can be adjusted to have the software automatically save an output report, a data status file, both files, types, or none. There are other features that may be adjusted within the settings window. However, the instances that would require changing these default settings are limited. For more information about these settings, please press the F1 key and then search for the term quantitative settings. Defining the standard curve. Once you've adjusted all necessary parameters in the settings window, you will need to define the, which FCS files belong to the assay's standard curve. The easiest way to do this is to shift click all the standard curve files in the list and then click the apply curve options button at the top of the screen. This will assign a standard curve point C0 through C7 to all highlighted files based on the adjustments just made in the settings window. If you make a mistake, simply click the remove curve button to undo the assignment. Make any necessary parameter adjustments in the settings window and then click apply curve options again. Alternatively, you may also left click and drag the circular blue standard curve point icons to the respective FCS files to assign a designation. Defining replicates in unknown samples. After defining the standard curve files, you will need to define any replicate schemes in your unknown samples. To define unknown samples as replicates of one another, begin by selecting all FCS files associated with a particular replicate. These files should be adjacent to one another in the file list, as previously described. After the replicate files have been selected, right-click on any of the highlighted files and select Rename from the list of options that appears. This will open the Define Names pop-up window. From the window, the following parameters should be adjusted. Prefix. Enter the name that you would like the software to call the replicate in the data output reports. The default name is sample, but this can be changed by typing into the text box. Start number. All replicate names are required by the software to have a number as well. The default start number is 1, but can be adjusted to other integer values by the user. Replicate mode. This setting is the same as it was for the standard curve files. Replicate number. Users should adjust this value to reflect the number of files in a given replicate, i.e. adjust this value to 2 if describing an unknown sample assayed in duplicate. Once you have defined all the appropriate settings, click on the green OK button to close the window. The replicate names that have just been assigned to your FCS files will now appear in the code column of the Quick Wizard file list to the immediate right of the file name. Defining dilutions in unknown samples. Define any dilutions made to unknown samples by using one of the following methods. Manually define the dilution factor for a particular FCS file by typing the value into the dilution fold column of the Quick Wizard file list. If multiple unknown samples share the same dilution factor, select the relevant FCS files and then right click and select dilution fold. Enter the dilution factor in the pop-up window and click OK. The software will then apply this value to all selected files. Once finished, click the green Next button at the bottom right of the software window to proceed to the gating portion of the Legendplex data analysis software.